What's going on all you Minties? As you know, Tuesday is usually the day that I do an advanced look at all the collected editions coming out from Marvel for the week. However, this week just seems to be a lot more Omnis and less collected editions. So these are four of the collected editions coming out this week. And then we're also going to be taking a look at the Loki Omnibus. So stay tuned. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these collected editions. All these books are due out in the direct market on September 8th, and then a few weeks later in the book market. So we got a couple of Mighty Marvel Masterworks, a trade paperback, and a graphic novel. And then I wanted to go ahead and do an omnibus because we have a lot of omnis. I'll be doing the Cosmic Ghost Rider and Fantastic Four uh, Volume 3 reprint at another day. But I did want to focus on Loki today. So remember, I always put timestamps in the description of the video to let you know when I start talking about a specific title. So you can jump around or you can view the whole video. But don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Ring that bell for notification. All that helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. So let's go ahead and get started with Miss Marvel. So first up, Miss Marvel. And this one is game over. So here's what the spine looks like. And of course, I'll be holding up the spines a little bit later. And then the back of the book, the book retailing for $12.99. And the reason for that is because these are smaller scale books. So these are the graphic novel line. So here it is compared to the size of an epic collection to kind of get a better idea of how it looks next to it. There we go. That's a better angle. So Miss Marvel, this is, I believe, the fourth. Yeah, here's the previous ones. Uh, the fourth graphic novel in this line. So it is all written by G. Willow Wilson. You have artwork in here from Mirka Andolfo, who has been blowing up lately with her work overseas and over at Image. Uh, Takeshi Miyazawa, who I will say has blown me away with the art in this particular uh, volume here. Now this I've read already in oversized hardcover format and let's not forget the last few people here Francesco Gaston, Marco Faiya, and Diego Olortegui and Ian Herring is doing the uh, art, the color artwork here. Here we have a variant cover uh, but what I was gonna say is that Miyazawa's artwork has just blown me away in this particular volume. I've read these when they uh, were coming out in oversized hardcover format. Uh, my daughter has been reading them. And Miyazawa's art, to me, just looks outstanding in this particular volume. Um, it looks unfinished, and I like that. It looks like it's not ink. It looks like it's just the colors on the pencils. And I like the grittiness that it brings to it. Um, and the, the artwork that uh, Miyazawa did in the pages of Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane, or Ultimate Spider-Man for that matter, just looks very clean cut, very anime, of course very manga influence. But in this, it just looks really, really nice. I like that it's unpolished. So this volume right here collects issues 13 through 24 of the 2015 Miss Marvel series, so when it was re uh, relaunched. So it has 256 pages. And sometimes the variant covers are on the opposite page of the standard cover. Uh, this is a pretty unique storyline here um, about this particular guild member that is taking over the real world. So uh, Kamala plays an online game with some people and one of them happens to find out who she is. So this person comes and kind of blackmails her, threatens her. So is it really a computer program or is it a real person and who is this person i thought that was a pretty unique storyline uh, in the way that that was dealt with uh, we also have her dealing with one of her best friends moving away to a, a wakanda now and this is what some of the other artwork in this particular volume looks like and of course all the art i think is really brought together by herring i think he is an awesome colorist which is why i was mentioning him earlier and just making everybody's art look very similar, even though they're not at all. Now, let's look in the back here, because I don't think this one has extras. And it does not have any extras. Um, but I was wrong. This is the fifth graphic novel. So there's uh, another volume before this one. And that one is called Army of One, I think. Now, let's keep going. More Mighty Marvel Masterworks. I have to say, this is... A series that has been bringing my family together or maybe uh, maybe to my kids breaking them breaking us apart because 
yeah, uh, this is something that we're reading together. We're reviewing on the channel together. So keep an eye out on the channel if you haven't subscribed. Um, we do family reviews of these Mighty Marvel Masterworks, this being the Avengers. So we'll be doing a more thorough look together as a family. But we have the direct market cover here and the standard edition cover. The standard edition cover available everywhere. Uh, whereas the direct market cover is only available at places like your local comic book shop or cheapgraphicnovels.com, Walt's Comic Shop, Dying Breed Collectors, Organic Price Books, In Stock Trades, Tales of Wonder. This available everywhere. Target, Amazon, places like that. So it's not just, of course, the covers. I also like to point out the fact that the spines are different. And for the first time, the backs are different. I don't mean for the first time because they've also done this in the Marvel Masterworks line. But the standard edition has the volume number of the stories, whereas this has the volume number of the ongoing limited edition. So this is the fourth volume in the Mighty Marvel Masterworks line. Uh, I know it's a little bit confusing, but that's what they've done with the uh, Marvel Masterworks. So anybody that's a collector that collects these has volumes 1, 2, and 3, and now 4. And Volume 1, of course, being Spider-Man, Volume 2 being the Fantastic Four, Volume 3 being X-Men Volume 1, and now Volume 4 being the Avengers Volume 1. Everything else inside the book is identical. It's just the outside of the books that are different. And again, if you want a more thorough review of that, more of an in-depth look at these books, by all means, come back to the channel. Uh, and I'm already going to get them started on the next one. That, I think this one comes out next month. And that is the Thor Volume 1. This is going to be interesting. Because to me, this always read like Shakespearean Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. So it's going to be interesting to see what my kids think of this. But yeah, Avengers Volume 1. Next up is X Factor by Leah Williams, Volume 2. So, another one from, well, now, now we're looking at the Reign of X era. Collecting issues 6 through 10 of X Factor. And sadly, that's where X Factor kind of ends. That's not a big spoiler. That's just, it's not, a, I'm not saying it's a cancellation of the book. But the characters move on elsewhere, and you can find out for yourself uh, by reading this. So again, collecting issues 6 through 10, so this stuff taking place after X of Swords, or 10 of Swords. Um, this is the aftermath of that. We have the characters of North Star, Prodigy, oh here they are, Prestige, Eyeboy, Polaris, Deken, and Aurora back together again, and trying to solve this mystery that's been going around since issue number 1. And a lot of it has to do with characters dying left and right on Krakoa and that's kind of the thing of the Dawn of X series right ever since House and Powers of X characters well you can find out for yourself if you've not been keeping up with the X-Men what exactly is going on to those that have died uh, but this mystery is pretty interesting uh, it does sh uh, bring back one of my favorite X-Force members and that is Siren so Teresa Cassidy makes a return. It's always a pleasure to see those kind of characters come back. Uh, we also get some surprise guest stars, not just Dazzler, but others. And then, sadly, like I said, all the stories kind of wrap up because we get to the X-Men Gala. And I'm not even going to show you any of those pages, but X-Factor does play a big, important role in the X-Men Gala storyline. Uh, so, not X-Men Gala, I'm sorry, the Hellfire Club uh, Gala. But... That leads into the next event, which is uh, the Trial of Blank. And you can find out after reading this. But X Factor, since playing a big important part, can't show any of the artwork from that particular issue. But that is in, um, issue number 10. So that is also included in the Gala oversized hardcover that is coming out, I believe, in... Well, now it's November or December. But I did want to showcase some of this artwork that is in here by David Baldeon. And, of course, Leah Williams writing all of this. She does have her goodbye letter in here, which is sad to always read. Let's look at the extras here in the back. So here are the covers. And then we also get variant covers back here. And that is X Factor Volume 2. Of course, I'm not going to forget to do the spines. Hit that pause button. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. Let's keep going. So last but certainly not least is the Loki Omnibus. Uh, this here is the standard edition cover. To your left, 
That is your direct market cover drawn by Marie Severin and the standard edition cover drawn by Mark Brooks. Again, direct market cover only available in the direct market like local comic book shops or cheapgraphicnovels.com, Tales of Wonder, Instock Trades, Organic Press Books, or Walt's Comic Shop, just to name a few places. But here we have Loki. Here's the spine right there, Volume 1. I guess depending on the sales of this book, we might get a Volume 2. Here are the covers that it collects in here, so mainly a lot of the journey into mystery. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, the contents here, but I did want to show the design underneath this dust jacket. I like that. That's really cool, taking panels from the comic books on, that are collected in here and just giving it this green tone. And then, of course, the word Loki right there, because that's really all you need. So let's go ahead and get this open and talk just a little bit about this book. So this really collects every early appearance in chronological order of the character of Loki, created by Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, and Jack Kirby. Uh, but you also have credits in here by Robert Bernstein, one of the writers, and all the artists, Jack Kirby, Joe Sinat, Big John Buscema, Neil Adams, Steve Ditko, and Mary Severin, and all the inkers, Joe Sinat, of course, being a lot of Jack Kirby's inks, his own inks, and then the letters, and uh, they don't really do a lot of the color credits back then because I don't think they credited the colorist back then. So the table of contents here in chronological order. So starting all the way from Journey into Mystery number 85 uh, from 1962 and then ending with Thor 181 in 1970. So we got about eight years worth of Loki in here. So this does collect Journey into Mystery 85 which is his big appearance. That's when the character first appears. So let's talk about what is collected in here. This does collect in full Avengers number one, Journey into Mystery 111, 113, 115 through 123, Thor, when the title changed over to Thor, 153 to 157, 167, 173, 175 to 177, 179 to 181, and annual number two. And then material from, of course, his first appearance, Journey into Mystery 85, 88, 91, and 92, 94, 97, 100 to 104, 107 and 108, 110, 112, and 114. So as 124 and 125, and then material from Thor when the title changed over, officially to uh, 126 to 129, 142 and 147 to 152, as well as Strange Tales 123, Tales to Astonish 101, and Silver Surfer number four. So it is the character of Loki appearing in chronological order, mainly through the pages of Journey into Mystery. You'll see this is the way that he looked back then, his helmet looking a little bit different. And here's his really quick origin. Now there was a character appeared in the Golden Age in a Venus, I think it was Venus number six comic, but this is the modern Loki, the one from the myth, the god of mischief, and this is a pretty interesting appearance for a first appearance. You have the character of Loki that has been put into this prison of this tree, and Odin put him in there, and he said, you will be trapped in here until somebody sheds a tear for you, thinking nobody really cares about Loki and no one ever will. However, Loki uses that to his advantage by controlling the tree eventually years years later and making a leaf fall in Heimdall's eye so I'm Heimdall starts tearing up because the leaf fell in his eye due to Loki therefore breaking the curse and Loki is let loose of course the very first thing he wants to go do is go and pull some mischief on his brother who is partly Donald Blake partly Thor Odin's son that really is the character of Loki. What else can you say about Loki? That origin really sets up who he is. He finds cunning ways of always coming back. And this collection here is pretty interesting because this is just stories featuring him, including the big one right here, which is the coming of the Avengers. This is the first time the Avengers got together and all due to Loki pulling some kind of prank, not really a prank, but just some mischievous ways of turning the Hulk against people. So all these characters come together, and yes, they try to get the Fantastic Four to come and help, but it's the characters that aren't in the Fantastic Four, that aren't mutants, coming together and becoming Earth's mightiest heroes, all due to Loki. We also see things in here like some of his creations. We get to see a closer look at his origin with some of these backup stories from the Tales of Asgard. 
and we see the fight here where he switches magic with Doctor Strange. We see the creation of the Absorbing Man. So you kind of get a better understanding of who the character is. Now one thing I do want to bring up is the origin of Loki. Through these pages you're not going to get the full detail origin of him, but you pretty much get to find out, you know, he's the adopted son of Odin. Uh, he is actually the son of one of the Frost Giants, and you're probably going to be confused at first because they weren't really these big blue giants when they first appeared. But those are the characters that will become the Frost Giants. And Odin decides to adopt him. And from the very beginning, through the tales of Asgard, you'll see just the how much he hated the idea of being weak not being a strong character not being a leader like his brother so you see a lot of competition but later on that stuff some of it gets retconned but i did want to bring up through these pages you will see a lot of his origin stories and then actually towards later on you get to see some of the stuff already being retconned for the character of loki and odin and Odin's father. And then of course you get to see more family members like Loki's daughters and some of his kids, but I'll let you find out for yourself who those characters are or will be. Now, one of the biggest questions I've gotten about this is how much double dipping is this? If you have, for example, the Thor Omnis. Well, the Thor Omnis is, all of this is included in that with the exception of the Doctor Strange story and the Silver Surfer story. Everything else is included in those Thor Omnis. This is mainly for people that want to know about Loki as a villain and from his perspective of things in chronological order. I would love to see a modern collection of this stuff. You're talking about the Agent of Asgard. You're talking about the, well, some of the JMS stuff that he did when Loki was Lady Loki. I would love to see that kind of collection uh, one day. The book retails for $125 uh, and it has 1,004 pages. But yeah, I would like to see modern collections of this stuff for this character. I would also like to see, now that we know we're getting a Doctor Doom omnibus, other villains like Apocalypse, just to see Rise of Apocalypse included in there somewhere. Or Kang the Conqueror, my favorite Avengers villain. But then how would you do Kang the Conqueror, right? Which version do you take? Do you go with the Mortis route? Or do you just focus on purely Kang with some of the retcons? Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments down below what other villains you would like to see this freaking story right here the silver surfer story uh, and if you have the silver surfer omnibus it is collected in there just like that strange tell story with dr strange if you have the dr strange omni it's collected in there but this has artwork by big john buscema love that man's art but let's keep going here's the actually this is what they use for the direct market cover there by marie severin so it's interesting to see the character and some of his history retconned later on. Big fan of that stuff. Uh, the, 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 the idea that he was to bring in Ragnarok into Asgard. I love that stuff. As far as the extras, we've got some original pages here. And then we have some covers, the Strange Tales. Cover to the Marvel Treasury Edition number 10. And Thor, Tales of Asgard. These are reprinting stories. This one here by Olivier Coppel. And the Avengers. Oh, okay, they're also featuring redone covers that feature Loki. And this is the direct market cover here. However, this is the new colors for the Fall of Asgard. And, of course, this beautiful, super sexy Loki from Mark Brooks. Man, that is... That's an awesome cover. As far as the binding, you have 1,004 pages, and it is printed at the Donley printer, and here's what the eye looks like. And the book lays over, you know, it lays over really nice towards the very beginning, towards the middle, and then, of course, the back. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your minties. If you're a first-time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout 
and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of each of these collected editions. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're picking up for your collection. Uh, are you picking up the Loki Omnibus or you're okay with the Thor collections that you have, the Omnis, the Epic Collections, the Marvel Masterworks, or what other villain you'd like to see, such as the upcoming Doctor Doom early next year. Me, myself, I'd love to see Apocalypse and Kang the Conqueror. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and more importantly, everyone, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.